welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show with your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. It is the Wisconsin Vegetable Garden Radio Show on 860 AM, WNOV, and W293CX 106.5. The Gardener.com is your destination for over 1,000 garden videos, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. Absolutely. Well, Holly, let's go to the Ivy Organics hotline and bring in our next guest. Southeastern Wisconsin Normal's mission is to educate the Wisconsin public on cannabis and the harms of cannabis prohi- prohibition and advocate for the legalization of production and use of cannabis for medicinal, adult recreational, industrial purposes. We have two representatives from Southeastern Wisconsin Normal on the line. Welcome to the program, Sawyer and Eric. Hi, thanks for having us. Well, thank you for taking time out of your day to join us and educate Holly, myself, and all of our listeners on your mission here. Well, Eric, I want to start with you. As we set today, how many states have legalized recreational cannabis and how many states have medical cannabis and where are we at here in the state of Wisconsin? Um, So as of right now, there are eight states that have recreational cannabis legalized. 29 states have medical cannabis um, laws passed in some form or another. And there's a lot of variance there regarding like which conditions are allowed to be treated with it, who is allowed to grow it, how much a person can possess. There's a wide uh, variance in how open some of these laws are. And Wisconsin currently has bills in the legislature to do both of these things, to legalize it medically and recreationally. But the Republicans are currently refusing to hold any votes on them. Um, so in some ways it seems like we're, we're a ways off because we don't even have medical yet. But if we can really elect a lot of pro-cannabis legislators in 2018, um, we could have both of those things in hopefully just a couple of years. Is it, uh, Eric, is it, uh, uh, the main reason is the Republicans in office, but is there more of a, un, uh, under, uh, a non-understandable scare that, oh, this is just a drug for hippies? Is that kind of why it's, it's stalled here? And if we can get medical, is the chances of recreational an easier slope to slide down to get it legalized? Yeah, I mean, all, all eight of the states that have legalized it recreationally started with medical first. And so that, that's definitely the path that everyone's followed so far, and I think that would make our path easier. Um, whether it's, you know, there's the scare around it being, you know, some, some terrible drug and just associated with hippies, I don't think, I mean, I think that is the case with some of the legislators, and that, that's certainly the case with some people. But the, a Marquette poll from last summer showed 59% of Wisconsinites want uh, cannabis to be regulated like alcohol. They want it to be legalized in the same way that Colorado and California have done it. So I think among the general population, there's not that fear anymore. It's just a matter of waiting for the legislators to catch up with where the people have gotten to. Definitely. So, Sawyer, what are some commonly known health benefits of cannabis? So there's a couple dimensions to this. Um, There are health benefits to the recreational use of cannabis that uh, many people enjoy. You know, many people may not be using cannabis. I would say most people aren't um, for, you know, a medicine. So it relieves tension and stress uh, while allowing that safe euphoria that is never going to put you in the hospital. And I think the non-lethal aspect about cannabis is one of the healthiest aspects about it is that it doesn't have a toxicity level within the bloodstream and you're never going to die from it. Um, so there's those benefits, and then there's also a huge medicinal side um, when it comes to treatment of, you know, various uh, medical conditions. Cannabis contains uh, compounds that are natural anti-inflammatories, sleep aids, uh, appetite stimulants, uh, anti-proliferative compounds, so which actually means that the cannabinoids target uh, tumors and other autoimmune diseases like cancer and Crohn's. Um, and actually have been shown to reduce this, the size of tumors. Um, and so THC and CBD being the two most prominent compounds are you know, being heavily researched for their uh, properties and all of those things. I mean, you can just do a quick Google search and there's just a list as long as your arm of the uh, benefits to cannabis use and the, the treatments that it offers. Well, Eric, let's talk about if people are are listening and are like, well, I still don't want cannabis to be legalized. There is still a major industrial benefit to having 
marijuana or hemp, cannabis, whatever term you want to use, to be grown, what are some of those industrial uses that cannabis can be used to benefit us, even if we don't smoke it and, and are against the use of human consumption of it? Yeah, um, cannabis is a very, very versatile plant. Um, the fibers are very good for making textiles for clothing or rope. Um, in fact, uh, if you look up in Merriam-Webster's dictionary, the word canvas, as in like canvas sales, or like a painting canvas, that word derives from the word cannabis because all the early canvas sales for ships were all made from hemp. And you can look it up in the dictionary and uh, verify that. Um, and also, um, you can turn the, the hemp plant into oil, just like we do, you know, we make so much stuff from ethanol and corn oil. Well, you can make a lot of stuff from, from hemp oil too, and you can make pla like biodegradable plastics from hemp. Um, there's there's just anything you can do with oil um, or very fibrous plants you can do with with cannabis and it's just a very eco-friendly plant to grow you don't need many pesticides and uh, herbicides and toxic chemicals to to keep to grow a hardy plant and so it's it's a more eco-friendly way to get a lot of these um, different industrial uh, products that we're currently using um, corn and uh, fossil fuels for Right, and what it takes in uh, 15 years for an acre of trees to grow, it takes just months for an acre of cannabis to grow. And if I am correct by the research that I found, over 25,000 different items can be used to manufacture with using the, the cannabis plant. Yeah, true, true. Yeah, there's, it's very versatile and a very hardy, quick-growing plant. So, Sawyer, what are some of the biggest misconceptions about the uses of cannabis? So there are a lot of uh, misconceptions, but I think the biggest one is the potency of it. Um, we're very familiar with alcohol in this state, and so we just, you know, we go into a liquor store and you see something that's a certain proof, and you know how much alcohol is in there. Uh, with cannabis, each specific strain and each treatment and application method is so varying depending upon the individual and the you know, makeup of that person's body, their metabolism, and also the strain itself. There's over 400 known compounds within cannabis. And so the important thing to note is that it's all about dosage and then matching the specific strain to the specific individual. Um, you know, it's not just more or less effect, it's differing effects. Some people may like a sativa, so an energetic high that is good for morning use, some creativity. Um, other people prefer an indica strain where they want to be um, uh, put to sleep or they want to stimulate some appetite and, appetite and just kind of veg out and uh, watch TV. So that's a, you know, a huge one. Is, and that certainly goes al along with the uh, versatility of the plant. Um, it's just it, uh, it varies a lot. Now, with the states that have the recreational marijuana legalized, is there, ram is there parameters in which the, the plant has to be or the, the product has to fall within that this is the dosage or the, the power of this, uh, uh, the plant that's being bought? There are, there are extremely strict guidelines in most states with medicinal programs. Um, all, anything that goes from, uh, the, from a grow to a dispensary is going through a rigorous a testing process at, le at least it, it should be um, some states have gotten in trouble with this especially with the boom of the recreational market of kind of having to force things uh, but there is a protocol for that um, when it comes to pest the pesticide testing uh, the testing for magnesium levels within the bud itself uh, making sure that there were no um, uh, so yeah the pesticides and then also making sure that there's no uh, butane or solvents in any of the products that you're getting um, that are concentrates. Um, so yeah, there's a, like a huge amount of testing and a bunch of money being poured into it. Um, I think in the next five years, we're just going to see the level of cannabis just grow ex exponentially because of the technology that's being, um, you know, put into e made mainstream use right now. Um, and there's a lot of companies doing a lot of really good work. You can even buy um, products over the internet, you know, they're quite expensive, but you still can buy them and test your own cannabis at home for yourself just to see the breakdown of what exactly you're, you're getting into. It's uh, quite interesting. Now, for people who want cannabis, or, sorry, Eric, <laughs> for people who want cannabis legalized, whatever reason being, what can they do on a personal level or more state, local level to assist? 
Yeah, uh, that's a really good question. Um, so the most basic thing that everyone should do is contact their legislators. Um, either give them a call, email them, write them a letter. Um, that's, that's the most basic thing that everyone should do for every issue that they care about. It only takes a few minutes. And, I mean, it, it, that's the most important thing to do. Um, otherwise, you can get involved with a local group like ours, Southeastern Wisconsin Normal. Um, if you go to our website, S-E-W-I-N-O-R-M-L, there's no A in normal. Um, we're the Southeastern Wisconsin chapter for the National Organization for the Reform of Marijuana Laws, and we're always looking for volunteers to help run like informational tables at different events, um, doing petitioning, um, and we're, we're going to be doing a lot of uh, campaigning for pro-cannabis politicians because it, we can't we can't do ballot initiatives in this state the way Colorado and all eight states that have legalized it recreationally have all done ballot initiatives where the people were able to directly vote on it. But we can't do that here in Wisconsin, so we need to elect pro-cannabis politicians if we ever want to get this done. So working on campaigns to elect those politicians is ultimately um, one of the most powerful things you can do if you're looking to get involved. And, and, you know, whether you're listening and you're for it or you're against it, get involved in the politics and, and so we can all work together. And a lot of times, you know, uh, maybe some generations of people hear the word cannabis, uh, Eric, and go, oh, it's a bad drug, it's a bad drug. There are a lot of openly available researches that's done by independent studies that show that proper usage and consumptions of it can actually benefit some very killing diseases that we are dying from on a daily basis. Yeah, definitely. I mean, like there. I mean, especially when it comes to like children with different seizure disorders. Um, there are lots of people. I, I mean, I know a lot of people who use it as a replacement for opiates. I know people who said that cannabis has saved their life because otherwise they were going down a bad path of addiction on like Percocets, Vicodin. And they said that it probably would have ended up with them them dead, and instead they were able to start smoking or using cannabis in some form. And it's just it's just a safer way to to get the relief that you need in that case. And for a lot of these things, like with seizure disorders, sometimes it's the only thing that actually provides relief to to people. Now, Sawyer, I want to ask: Is cannabis oil legal in the state of Wisconsin, and why? What is the is, is why is it so beneficial? And it doesn't have Holly. What is the the term used? It doesn't have the, the THC. The THC that people get high off of. What, where are we at on the cannabis oil and the le and and how legal it is here in, in the state? So, in April, Governor Walker signed a bill that would allow people access with a doctor's note, and the access is for. CBD uh, oil, CBD products, uh, products that contain uh, CBD cannabidiol, which is the non -psycho the second most prominent in the uh, non-psychoactive uh, component, but it's incredibly beneficial for people with epilepsy. Uh, children who have hundreds of seizures a day go to having almost no seizures um, just from usage of that. Um, so CBD-derived products are legal for possession um, if you have a doctor's note. So you have to have a doctor's note, but the loophole is not even a, really a loophole. It's just kind of a, a conundrum within within the law is that there's nowhere you can safely and reliably access good CBD medication. Um, it's There's a an influx of companies that will just slap CBD on a product, um, even if it you know contains very, very low levels, just to make a quick buck. The FDA actually did a study. Um, in 2014, I believe, of 150 different uh, CBD-related products, and they found an 80% fail rate for the potency levels that were quoted on the packaging itself. Um, so it's real. It's all up to people doing their own research. Uh, people who qualify for CBD access in the state of Wisconsin um, often need have to drive to another state, or they take to the internet and you know access it by some other means. Um, you can ship uh, CBD uh, over state lines, and this is another weird loophole. So uh, federally, anything that's derived from the cannabis plant is illegal. Um, but companies that produce products with CBD inside um, can ship as long as there's a threshold of less than 0.3% THC. 
Um, and so they can ship without prosecution, but they're still breaking federal law. Um, and so you can get it in this state, but the possession of it is you're, you're protected if you have that doctor's note. You know, if you have a pre-existing condition um, and your doctor is, you know, willing to, to sign it, um, you know, you can you can access it that way. Uh, but anything with a high enough level of THC is, good, is still going to land you in jail. So unfortunately, like hash oil, um, dabs or a concentrate of that of that matter are still very much illegal. Well, Eric Sawyer, we greatly appreciate you taking time out of your day to inform us and show us some of the information, share with some of the information that you have on this. Uh, Eric, again, for people who want to find out more about you and uh, learn about the benefits and all of that goes along with it, where can people go and, and get a hold of uh, more information? Uh, people want more information, they can go to our website at S E W I N O R M L dot org. Or they can look us up on Facebook um, by searching for Southeastern Wisconsin N O R M L, um, and those are those are probably the two best ways to to get plugged in with us. Well, gentlemen, thank you very much for the information you've uh, shown us. Some information here that we were not aware of, and uh, thank you for sharing that with us and our listeners. Thank you for coming on the program. Oh. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Thank you. If you're in the Milwaukee or surrounding areas, just tune your radio to 860 AM or FM 106.5. You can also find links on our Facebook pages, The Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener and Home Canning. Our website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, click on the radio tab at the top of the page, then click on the Listen Live button, and you'll have immediately access to our live program. Mobile devices work very well also. Go to your app store and download for free the TuneIn app or the simple radio app. Then search WNOV 860, save it to your favorites, and you can have access to our radio show live wherever you're at in the world. Our radio program will also have podcast replay under the radio tab day, uh, several days following the live broadcast. You can find all of these links in the show notes below. Our show airs 9 to 10 a.m. Central Standard Time every Saturday, March through the end of October. And we want to thank our sponsors because without them, this would not be anywhere possible. You can find all of their links under the radio tab on our website at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com. For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.